for it. I just might tell me, uh, he gonna shit at me, this and that. And when I got him on the ground, he got away when he got his put into my head with my mom in between us. Don't lie to me. I'm not lying to you at all. You went back, got one of your pistols. Me? Mm-hmm. Walk back up. Why are you run? Put it at your brother. At your brother's head. Set up all your brains out. These cops had no clue that they'll be held accountable for their actions, and owned in courtrooms and later interrogations. An officer was dispatched at a location after a complaint about domestic violence between two brothers. As he questioned one of them, the seriousness of the situation became clear. I know you've been in a fight and everything tonight. What, what kind of injuries do you have? I don't know. My brother knocked my tooth out. Let me see. He pulled out a knock. It's an inside. He pulled on me, started trying to stab me, then you put it in my head. Which, which side? Your, your left or right? Side. Right Let's see. Listen, man, right now, I'm in handcuffs, you're detained. Before I can ask you any questions, I gotta read you something, make sure you understand your rights. The confrontation was far more dangerous than the officer expected, and to make matters worse, the suspect in the case was a Georgia police officer. Hey, go ahead and tell me what, how else you were injured. You, you got a tooth, you missing a tooth, yeah. that happened during the fight. Um, you said something about him stabbing you or trying to stab you? What happened? And then when I did, got Did he him, actually stab you? He was, he was poking my stop. And then that's when he went and got his gun. Okay. He put his in my head first. He never made contact with him after? No, okay. he never. He, where he where else are you hurt? He sliced my hand and stuff. My mm-hmm. hand was sliced. Let me see. Turn around yeah. for me. Oh, I can see. The outside of it. Okay. Officer Joshua Garrett put a gun in his brother's head and pulled a knife at him. The reason behind this will leave you baffled. I got the argument because my mom let our brother, um, I guess stepson, spend the night. Okay. And I blew up my air mattress for my son to sleep on my air mattress. You know, that I bought. So my mom telling me that he pee on the sofa, so he needs to sleep on air mattress and your son needs to sleep on the sofa. And I was like, well, my son wants to sleep on the air mattress, he sleep on the air mattress. So my brother came out of his bedroom, told me, so you don't give a nobody else shit but yours. So if your stuff get peed out on, if my stuff get peed out on it, it don't matter to you. He just kept yelling, and I was like, that's a lie. It's my air mattress. Why, okay. why should I make my son sleep on the sofa? It's my air mattress. I blew it up for him. It's concerning how a matter so trivial ended up at such a devastating end. You'll be shocked to hear how the fight unfolded. Can you explain more in detail? Um, I I walked up still, he ran up on me and I pushed him away. And then he swung on me and hit me in my mouth. And then when I got a hook to him, he pulled out his knife told me, uh, he gonna stab me, this and that. And when I got him on the ground, he got away when he got his gun. Put it to my head with my mom in between us. After he went and got his firearm and um, put it and put it to my head, I I ran off the one and got mine. Okay. And then what did you do? I fired at him. You fired at him? Yes, sir. He'd already gone back into his bedroom? No. Where was he standing at that time? He was in the hallway. By his bed. He ran to his bedroom. Then when he got his shotgun. Okay. So he went back to his bedroom. He got his shotgun. He was standing in his bedroom. I, he was standing in his door. And then you came back and you sh- No. Almost unbelievable how things escalated into a fight, and the worst was yet to come. So can you explain to me why there are bullet holes in the floorboard and the floorboards inside the living room? Because tell me how that happened. The gun went off. It just went well, off? Yeah, it just went off. How many times did it go off? Like four times. Like four four times. times? Three or four times. On accident? Yeah, on accident. Was that, was you pulling the trigger or without pulling the trigger? I didn't pull the trigger. But you didn't pull the trigger, the gun just went off four times by itself? Okay. Alright, and so then you left the residence? I took, I took, I took out the chamber, I told my mom I'm leaving. Garrett's brother seemed to be in the wrong, but the officers would discover more about the case as they went over to interrogate the cop himself. Yes, Mr. Ann, how did that happen? Uh, I had to be when I hit him in the face once he reached out and used his left hand to hit me in. Okay. And <clears throat> swung back. I got gotcha. you. What exactly did you do with the You said, what did I do with it? Yeah. As he had my throat, put the knife in his, and I told him, let me go. I can You put it like up to his throat? Yep. Oh. And she broke it up when she was, she did whatever she did. The knife fell, 
he she pushed me backwards a little bit and he turned and he punched the wall. Yeah. And that's when she pushed me in my room. And I'm guessing he went into the kitchen to get his gun. As he when he have his kids over, he usually keep it on his people. A police officer must never brandish his weapon for personal gains. As it seemed, this might come very hard for the officer later. Did you ever pull that pistol out at any time? Okay. How many kids were in the house when all that happened? History six. Did you get a copy of the case number? No, I did not. Um, I can get it from my lieutenant. Uh, I got your man. The incident needed an unbiased investigation into it, and that's exactly what happened. Officer Garrett was called in for an interrogation, which started from him recalling the disastrous night. I was about to say, we started shoving, he pushed me up against the wall, I took a knife, I put it up to his stove, told him to let me go, I split his stuff. My mom separated us, and I fell on the ground, I went to my room, she punched a hole in the wall, I looked down and saw that I had blood on my shorts, and then my hand, I went to the bathroom, so I washed the blood off my hands. And that's when I heard the shooting. I went into my closet and got my shotgun, which is how the shotgun got blood on it. And I told him, if you come up the steps and you come past this, and come to me, I will Not the same wording that I used the last time, as you know, I, when I say the same wording, well, I'm referring to you saying I will shoot you in my exact wording that I used the last time. Did you ever grab any other gun besides a shotgun? No. There were several inconsistencies in the statements from Garrett, and the investigator was about to teach him a lesson. I'm going to show you some pictures, and I want you to tell me what they look like. Okay. Yeah, you see the door? Okay. What, did, does this look, door look familiar to you? Yes. It's my bedroom door. Okay. Still damage to the door, on uh, the bedroom door, to be specific. And damage to the bedroom door. What kind of damage do you think that is? I have no idea. D due to the different markings that could be from the shot one or don't lie to me. You so don't, don't lie to me. Sir. I am not lying to you at all. And don't accuse me of lying to you. You ask me this other one. The investigator was doing a great job, and he didn't let the officer gain any grounds over him. You asked him a question, and I'm answering your question. I said, it could come from me showing hitting the shotgun because of the paint that's peeling that way. Okay. And then I was going to proceed and say it could also be damaged from a slug before you decided to tell me not to lie to you. Don't do me like that. Do not treat me like that. If you would allow me to finish explaining, then you wouldn't have to raise your voice and tell me not to lie to you. Okay, so... That could be because of a shotgun or a slug, correct? Yes. Well, if anybody shoots at me, I am trained to shoot back. Okay. I wish I shot back no matter who it was. So now you're you're going back and you're saying that he could have shot you. I never told you. you. Stop, I'm, I'm talking. I never told I'm you. Talk, let me talk here. Remember when I asked you on Monday if he had shot you while you were in your bathroom, what did you say? I said it's possible. No. I said no, he didn't shot at me. You said no, he did not shoot at me. I've been shot at before. I know what it sounds like. Stop, I'm still talking. I am still talking. Let me talk. Garrett had no clue that things would become quite tough for him, as the investigator had already interviewed numerous witnesses of the case. Um, through the week, we've conducted interviews, okay, with multiple people. Um, we know that you grabbed your one of your pistols and you walked out there and you held it to your brother's head. We know we know that when he was standing in front when you were standing in front of him, he was on the stairs and you were standing in front of him, he fired around down the hall. Okay. We know that for sure. Okay. We recovered a slug. When I was standing in front of him? We recovered a slug from the door. Okay. Okay. Listen, if if, if you know, if if your pistol OD, your pistol OD, it's an OD. It happens. What do you mean, OD? Accidental discharge. I didn't fire a, a, a gun at all. The officer continued to lie about the interaction with his brother and acted as if he did nothing wrong when actually he did put a gun to his head. You went back, got one of your pistols. Me? Walked back up, wanted to run, put it at your brother, at your brother's head. Said, I'll blow your brains out. And that's when he went and got his gun. I don't recall that. 
I do MS divide on the street, but I do not recall that. Soon after the interrogation came to a stop, the officers had a surprise ready for the officer who thought he would fool them all. all right, take off the shirt and you're gonna put the shirt on. What false statements am I giving? Just myself, boy. Yeah. No other answers on me. That's my wallet. Also in my right pocket, there's my bag. He was soon arrested for giving false statement, and to make matters worse, he was immediately terminated from his position as a police officer. This is notice of your employment termination. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's effective as of today. Yes, sir. Okay. These are the policy violations here. This is your copy. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm what they said I did. My bedroom on my nightstand. My control rifle is in the closet, standing up underneath where you'll see my uniforms are hanging up. And my duty belt is in the closet laying on a white um, little plastic drawer container along with the vest carrier. This is our bottle paper that's on this property that's here. Okay. And uh, that's that. Here you go. This is how casually Garrett lost his police job, and, if we're being honest, a person with his demeanor doesn't even deserve the badge. This officer got what he deserved, and this next one was humiliated even worse in the courtroom. At least give me the satisfaction of knowing that you're out there beating up police right now. LOL. How humiliating and degrading. You knew better. You were better trained than any of those officers out there. Kingster police officer William Mendez was charged with assault and misconduct after he horribly beat a black man at a traffic stop. The details of the case will leave you shocked. The victim involved in this tragedy is a 58-year-old black man who was driving his Cadillac in Inkster, a suburb of Detroit. On the evening of January 28, 2015, where his life changed forever, he was stopped by the defendant a then Inkster police officer and his and his partner, Officer Zelenowski. With his hands extended out of his driver's window, he was grabbed out, thrown to the ground, and struck 16 times in the head by the defendant. In his attempt to arrest him, he was thrown onto a window shield of a patrol car, bleeding profusely from a head injury. If this wasn't bad enough, watch how the officer reacted after inflicting this torture. The responding police officers arrived as the defendant is wrestling the defendant to the ground. Mr. Dent was struck, kicked, and tapped while on the ground by what appeared to be a group of angry, anxious police officers that celebrated after the defendant was beaten and cuffed. The video in the car shows the police officers fist bumping as a celebratory act of bravery by the defendant and his cohorts. The racist cops were completely out of their minds as they responded to the stop, and what happened next was utterly absurd. If his conduct was indicative of what he was thinking, I would have thought this. What crime did I commit? Being a black man in a Cadillac stopped for a minor traffic offense by a group of racist police officers looking to do a nigger. 
as police officer John Zelenuski, auxiliary police officer, testified in court too, in his response to a text, was quoted as saying, at least give me the satisfaction of knowing that you're out there beating up right now, LOL. How humiliating and degrading that must have been. The careless attitude didn't end here, as the officers continued to do something even worse at the police station. He was left in a cell for a number of hours before getting medical treatment. But after hearing the defendant and his fellow officers joke about his injuries as it were wiping blood off their uniforms with disinfectant. 2015, please be quiet in my courtroom. I remember coming into this building with such enthusiasm, so excited. And I remember a lawyer telling me that nobody leaves out of this building like they came in. I didn't understand what that meant. 20 years later, I do. Even Judge Vonda Evans appeared distraught after hearing the case facts, highlighting the shortcomings of the police department. Field training, the recruit gets a reality check of what it's like to be out in the city. They then begin to shy away from what they've learned in the academy and automatically they become a, a prototype of really who trains them. It's horrible and it's worse than when cities that lack resources to properly train its new and existing officers with, me with methods to combat this culture and adopt new ways to handle the stress of the job. Racist officer Mendez really got some quick karma as he was about to get his sentence from a black woman. Six months police academy for most cities, it's long hours, horrible pay. I was out at a mall yesterday. I asked a woman a question. I said, you don't have to answer. How much do you get paid an hour? She said, $15 with benefits. Well, guess what? That's more than what Inkster gets. They don't get benefits. The equipment, the police cars are old. No support services for stress. No mandatory counseling for police officers. We'd rather put technology, money in technology by buying bait cars and surveillance cameras. But that doesn't reduce crime, it doesn't deter it. Properly trained police officers do. You've got to admire the brilliance of Judge Fonda, who didn't just lay out her fury, but carefully explained the roots of such ignorance and racism. The job is made worse because they see on a daily basis, more than any other occupation, the worst behavior that people can inflict on one another. They go to work every day with the knowledge that some of the people that they are sworn to protect and serve want to kill them. But how do we as a community expect superior services from police officers who are making security guard salaries to receiving little compensation and struggling just to pay health care. Despite everything, the judge was clear that nothing could justify the brutal actions of Officer Mendez. She returned to the main topic, ready to read his sentence. Mr. Melendez, the purpose of this long protracted sentencing was to offer you the one thing that this court believed you didn't give Mr. Dent, fairness and due process. On January 28, 2015, you did not fulfill your job. You performed just us. A game that began with the police stop. The purpose of it was to harass and degrade a motorist and inkster. The man chosen for your game was Floyd Dent, a black man. The game went like this. Mendez had no remorse or guilt for his actions, as he kept a straight face shamelessly throughout the sentencing. Mr. Dent put his hands out of the driver's window in plain view. Your partner and you pulled him out. When he didn't move fast enough for you, you refer to it as resisting. I call it bowing down to your command 
you l utilize your dirty, hairy tactics and use excessive force to arrest him. Your job was twofold. Investigate the situation, be a positive example to Officer Zelenowski. But you forgot the eye of justice was watching and recording this disgusting beating, seeing Mr. Dent slammed into the window shield with running down his face. The dash cam that was designed to protect you ended up being what convicted you. Fist busting after taking him down as a sign of bravery was just another cowardly act caught by the eye of justice. You knew better. You were better trained than any of those officers out there. Shortly after, the judge announced her sentence, and luckily, he had been already kicked out of the force. The way you denigrated that man was awful. Who would know and who would care about a lone black man being a by upstanding police officers? Boy, were you wrong. Eye of Justice captured you and your posse making fun of Mr. Dent, mimicking him struggling while you all wiped up off your uniforms with disinfectant while he watched. I'm going to commit you to the Michigan Department of Corrections as to count one for no less than 13 months, no more than 10 years. As to count two, I'm going to give you 90 days credit uh, for time served and close it out. The court is going to give you 85 days for credit. You have 42 days to appeal my decision. That includes this matter. Thank you. The former Inkster officer was sentenced to 13 months to 10 years in jail. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. Today, we saw cases where evil police officers were humiliated and embarrassed in courtrooms and interrogations. It's always great to see cops getting owned for their actions, and this time, the karma caught up to them in the form of legal justice. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and also making sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.